All right, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be drawing a network diagram for a project that has multiple starting activities and multiple finishing activities. We're going to do the forward pass, backward pass. We're going to find the critical path of the project and the project duration as well. So that is all going to be based off of this table of dependencies that we have here, where we're given the activities, those activities predecessors and the duration of each activity. Now, when we want to start drawing the network diagram, I really recommend doing a rough sketch first before we do the kind of more final clean version that shows all of the early starts and all of that. Um, this will just help us organize it before we get started. So in this project, we have three activities with no predecessors. So that's A, B, and C. They have no predecessors, so that means they're all starting at the beginning of the project. Now when we go to draw our rough sketch, just draw each of these. Um, I would just stack them vertically on the left hand side. And uh, we're going to work from left to right as we kind of map out what the network diagram is going to look like. So we move on to the next activity. It's going to be activity D and it depends on A. So all we have to do is just draw an activity going, uh, sorry, an arrow going from activity A to activity D. When we look at activity E, it depends on B and C. So B and C both have to lead into this one. So we can just draw two arrows going from B and C into E. Activity F here depends only on D. So again, we just have one single arrow going from activity D to activity F. Activity G depends on D and E. So we're going to have to have it somewhere over here where we have an arrow coming from D and an arrow coming from E. Activity H depends on F and G. So F and G are both going to lead into this one. So we draw an arrow coming out of each of them going to activity H. And then activity I here depends only on G. So we can draw a single arrow coming out to activity I. And then activity J is the final one. It depends only on activity E. So we can just draw it somewhere down here for activity J. So when we look at this, it's looking good so far. There's no unnecessary crossovers of our arrows. If there was, I would just reorganize it a little bit to minimize the crossovers. But looking at it, we see that activity A, B, and C are all our initial activities. There's nothing before them. And activities H, I, and J are all the final or finishing or terminal activities, whatever you want to call them, but there's nothing that comes after those. So that is pretty critical to pay attention to as we're going to have to figure out which one really is the one that's critical that kind of determines the late the late finish for all of them. So we'll get into that in one second. But before we draw our good copy, let's just resize this a little bit to give ourselves some space to work. And we're going to drop in our template here that we're going to use for our good copy or our convention, you could call it. And how we're going to be filling out the actual network diagram is we're going to put the activity name in the top middle. We're going to put the duration in the bottom middle. We're going to put early start in the top left, early finish in the top right, late start in the bottom left, and late finish in the bottom right. So now what we can do is we can redraw the network diagram in its kind of final version using these squares as our nodes. So once our good copy is drawn, we can go ahead and start filling out the early starts of each of the initial activities. So for A, B, and C, the early starts of all of them is going to be zero. They're all starting at the very beginning of the project. And then we can add the duration to find the early finish. So zero plus two is two. For B, zero plus three is three. And for C, zero plus one is one. Now we take the early finish of the predecessor and we bring it into the early start of the successor. So that's going to be the two coming into D. And we can add the duration again to get the early finish. So two plus two is four. For activity E, we have to bring the largest of the two competing predecessors in for the early start of E. So we have three or we have one. So we're going to bring in three and we're going to add three plus four to get seven for the early finish of E. Activity F only has one predecessor. So we're just going to bring that four straight in and we can add the duration so we get five. Activity G here has two predecessors. It depends on D and E. So we have to bring the larger of the two early finishes. So four or seven, we have to bring the seven in. We can add that duration. So seven plus three, and we can get 10 for the early finish. And then for activity J, it only has one predecessor. So that's that seven from E is this coming straight in. And seven plus two is going to give us an early finish of nine. 
For activity H, we have two predecessors as well. It's F and G, so we take the largest early finish of both of those. We have five or we have 10, so we bring in the 10. We can add the duration to get 15 for the early finish. And activity I only has one predecessor, so we're going to bring that 10 straight in, and then 10 plus three is 13. So now we have to look at each of the three final activities, so H, I, and J, and look at all of their early finishes. So we have nine, 13, and 15. So what we do in this kind of situation where we have more than one final activity is we take the largest early finish and we bring that into the late finish of all of them. So we bring it into the late finish of H, 15 is the largest, we're gonna bring 15 into the late finish of I, and we're going to bring 15 into the late finish of J. Now what we can do is we can work backwards doing our backward pass, which is basically going to be the opposite of the forward pass. So we're going to subtract the duration. So 15 minus five gives us that late start of 10 for H. 15 minus three gives us a late start of 12 for I. And then for J, 15 minus two gives us a late start of 13. We can bring the late start into the late finish of the predecessor. So we bring this 10 into this position for F, and we can subtract one from 10 to get nine for the late start. When we're looking at G here, there's two successors. So what we do, is it's the opposite of the forward pass. We bring the smaller of the two values. So we can bring a 10 or we can bring a 12. We're going to bring a 10 in, and then we'll subtract the duration to get seven. Looking at activity D, there's also two successors. So we have to bring the smaller late start in. So we have nine or we have seven. So we're going to bring a seven in as the late finish of D. And then we subtract the duration to get its late start, which is uh, seven minus two is five. For activity E here, it also has two successors. So again, we grab the smaller of the two values. It's either seven or 13. We bring that seven in. Seven minus four is three. And then for activity A, it just has one successor, so we're gonna bring that five straight across, and five minus two is three. Uh, for B, it only has one successor, so we're gonna bring that three straight in. Three minus three is zero. And for C, it also only has one successor, so we just bring the three straight in. And three minus one is two. So the first thing to check out right now is look at the early start and late start of all of the initial activities. One of them, it matches. It's a zero and a zero for B. Um, but we didn't get a zero at C and we didn't get a zero at A. That's okay. In a situation like this where you have multiple starts, w at least one of them has to match the early start. So if you're starting with a zero, at least one of them has to have a late start of zero as well. And that's actually going to form the first activity on our critical path. Um, any th activity that is critical has the early start and late start being the same value or the early finish and the late finish being the same value. So activities, activity B is critical, but activity A and activity C are not. That's just what that means. When we continue on looking for more critical activities, we can see here E, the early start, late start are both three and the early finish, late finish are both seven. So activity E is also going to be on our critical path. We get the same situation over here at G. We have seven and seven and 10 and 10. And then we also get the same situation over here at H where we have the early start, late start of 10 and the early finish, late finish of 15. If you look at any of the other activities, none of them have those values matching and they are not critical. So the critical path of this project is B, E, G, H. And what that means is if any of those critical activities that are highlighted in red got delayed by any amount, the entire project would be delayed. So even if you delayed one of these activities by one day, the whole project will finish a day later. Right now, as long as nothing goes wrong, we're expecting this project to be 15 days. But yeah, if one of the critical activities was delayed, then we'd be looking at delaying the entire project finish date. If you delayed any of the non-critical activities, there's a certain amount that each of them could be delayed by. That's called the float or the slack, and I've made some other videos on that as well. Um, but those can be delayed by a certain amount of days without actually impacting the project completion date. So hopefully that's helpful. If you'd like to see another similar example going over the critical path of a network diagram doing the forward and backward pass, I've got a link up on the screen to another video uh, that you might want to check out as well. So hopefully see you guys over there and have an awesome day.